Hello, and welcome to this video which introduces BC Housing Builder Insight number 19, Modeling the Future Climate in Passively Cooled Buildings. This presentation provides a brief overview of the methodology for assessing overheating under projected future climate conditions that is discussed in more detail in the Builder Insight document. The Builder Insight was developed by BC Housing as part of the Mobilizing, Building Adaptation and Resilience, or MBAR, project. My name is Susan McDougall and I'm with Focal Engineering. Focal prepared the content for the Builder Insight and this presentation with the support from Integral Group. This Builder Insight provides methodology of assessing the impact of anticipated future climate on overheating in buildings. It focuses particularly on passively cooled buildings under the BC Energy Step Code and is intended for readers who have an understanding of energy modeling. The Builder Insight was developed to supplement other BC housing publications related to the Step Code. Both the BC Energy Step Code Design Guide and the Supplement on Overheating and Indoor Air Quality are available at the BC Housing website, bchousing.org. We'll start with a brief background on why assessing overheating in buildings and considering future climate is important. As many of us know, temperatures are expected to increase across the globe throughout the next several decades. Here in BC, a temperature increase of between 1.3 and 2.7 degrees Celsius is anticipated by 2050. As buildings are often designed to last for 50, 80 or more years, it is important to consider how the performance of buildings designed today might be affected by these future climate conditions. The BC Energy Step Code assesses overheating by looking at each space within a building and assessing how many hours it exceeds a temperature limit. Typical spaces cannot exceed the temperature limit for more than 200 hours. If the building houses vulnerable populations, then this is decreased to 20 hours. As global temperatures warm, overheating within buildings is expected to increase, which will cause comfort issues and can ultimately lead to health and safety concerns, as has been seen in recent heat waves in Canada. Currently, step code models use Canadian Weather for Energy Calculation, or CWEC 2016 weather files, which are based off 30 years of historical weather data up until 2016. However, current weather conditions are already different than those represented in the CWEC 2016 files, and future conditions are anticipated to vary even further. For example, the graph on your screen is from a weather station located in the Vancouver Harbour with data published on the Environment Canada website. It shows the cooling degree days from 1990 to 2019, so a 30 year period, with a noticeable upward trend over the past 30 years. As this trend continues, the risk of overheating in buildings is going to further increase. We'll begin with a quick summary of the methodology outlined in the Builder Insight, and then we'll look at each step in more detail. So the first step in future climate overheating analysis is to obtain a future weather file. Next, the weather file should be analyzed by determining key characteristics such as heating degree days and cooling degree days. After that, it's time to run the model and perform the overheating analysis which includes determining the overheating season, calculating the overheating temperature limits, and comparing the model results against these limits. An optional fourth step is to consider additional analysis and design strategies that may need to be implemented in order to mitigate overheating under future climate conditions. Finally, the overheating results need to be summarized and reported along with the key characteristics of the weather files. So to begin with, how do you find and choose a future weather file? It is recommended that future climate files be obtained from the Pacific Climate Impacts Consortium, or PCIC. They are a research facility based out of the University of Victoria who have created future shifted weather files for locations in BC 
that exist in the CWEC 2016 dataset. A link to their website is shown on your screen and is also in the Builder Insight. PCAG has created future weather files for several different future climate scenarios and three different timeframes. These are based on three scenarios developed by the International Pla Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. The three climate scenarios are described using Representative Concentration Pathways, or RCPs. RCP 2.6 is the best case scenario, or the blue line on the graph shown on your screen, and it assumes significant greenhouse gas reductions across the globe. RCP 4.5, the middle line, is the stabilization scenario. And RCP 8.5 is the worst case scenario, or the line with the steepest slope. More details about the RCP scenarios are available in the Builder Insight. The three time periods represented are the 2020s decade, the 2050s decade, and the 2080s decade. To reduce the number of analyses, we recommend using the RCP 8.5 scenario for the 2050s because, first of all, it looks a reasonable distance into the future, and therefore it doesn't have too much variation between scenarios. Yet it also considers the worst case scenario, which helps to ensure the building's resilience regardless of what global measures to reduce emissions are eventually put in place. Once the file has been selected, we recommend doing a short analysis to look at trends in how the outdoor dry bulb temperatures are shifting from the current or CWEC 2016 files. For example, the graph on your screen shows the temperature distribution of the CWEC 2016 file for Vancouver in gray, compared with the RCP 8.5 file for 2015 in blue. And you can see the increases in both winter and summer temperatures. It is worth noting that the PCAG future weather files do not yet account for the expected increase in frequency of extreme weather events or variability in future climate conditions. Since they are based on the CWEC 2016 files, which represent an average weather year, so do the future files. So it's understood that further research is required in this area. However, in the interim, using these weather files and the process de described in the Builder Insight is a good first step. Once the weather file has been selected, the next step is to perform the overheating analysis. So we begin by running our energy model using the future weather file. Once the simulation is complete, we can analyze the energy model output and extract the overheating results. What we are looking for is the overheating hours, which is a metric defined in the City of Vancouver Energy Modeling Guidelines and referenced by the BC Energy Step Code. We'll go through the calculation in more detail over the next few slides. However, graphically, the overheating hours are represented on this slide. They're calculated for each space by summing the hours that the interior temperature, or the dark black line on your graph, is exceeding the limit, the blue line on your graph, for each summer month. The hours exceeding the limit are circled in red. To calculate the overheating hours, we begin by determining the overheating season, which represents the months that need to be included in the calculation. This is unique to both each location and each weather file. So start by calculating the average outdoor dry bulb temperature for each month of the year. On your screen, you will see an example for Vancouver using the RCP 8.5 weather file for the 2050s decade. Now any month with an average temperature greater than 10 degrees Celsius must be included in the overheating season. So the seven months shown in your table, April to October, comprise the overheating season for Vancouver for this weather file. 
In the second column, we've performed the same calculation on the current CWEC 2016 file for Vancouver. Due to the cooler temperatures, the overheating season is shorter, at only six months. It's important to keep in mind that the overheating season for any given location can and likely will change over time as the climate warms. Once the overheating season has been determined, the next step is to calculate the temperature limits for each month within the overheating season. This is done using the equation shown on your screen and the average monthly dry bulb temperature, or DBT, that we just calculated. The equation comes from the City of Vancouver Energy Modeling Guidelines and is based off the calculation from ASHRAE 55. For our Vancouver example, the limits are shown in the table on your screen and range range from 25.0 to 28.4 degrees Celsius for the 2050's RCP 8.5 weather file. In the second column, the CWEC 2016 peak temperatures are shown for the overheating season. Notice how these are lower, ranging from 24.5 to 26.9 degrees Celsius. Once the overheating temperature limits are established for each month, the overheating hours can be calculated. So for each space, calculate the number of hours that the interior dry bulb temperature exceeds the limit for each month. Then add up all of the hours for each month of the overheating season. No space should exceed the step code requirements which, just as a reminder, is typically 200 hours for most buildings, however, is reduced to 20 hours for buildings with vulnerable occupancies. Again, more information on this methodology can be found in the Builder Insight, as well as the City of Vancouver Energy Modeling Guidelines. Meeting the step code overheating limit isn't a guarantee of thermal comfort in a building as it's only measuring one characteristic of each space, and there are some known limitations to the calculation. So reporting additional results from the energy model can give the user a better idea of both the magnitude and the extent of overheating. Two additional results that designers might want to consider to evaluate thermal comfort include, number one, the hours that each space is above 26 degrees Celsius, and number two, the peak temperature of each space. So the suggested limit of 26 degrees is based on a recent study from the University of Ottawa that's referenced in the Builder Insight. The study gathers multiple research papers suggesting that indoor air temperatures should be maintained below 26 degrees Celsius for occupant safety and health. The peak indoor temperature better illustrates the magnitude of overheating. For example, if a space reaches an interior temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, which would be considered very hot, this wouldn't be adequately noted under a regular step code overheating analysis, which just reports the number of hours that a limit is exceeded, but not by how much. Energy modelers can also use the future weather files to support design that considers future performance, including costs. For example, while a building may be able to rely on operable windows for passive cooling under the CWEC 2016 weather files, it might experience overheating issues with future weather files if other strategies aren't considered. However, the Builder Insight cautions the user not to immediately oversize mechanical equipment in anticipation of increased cooling requirements, as this could cause operational issues inefficiencies and increased energy consumption. The last section of the Builder Insight provides suggestions for reporting the results and key weather file characteristics. For any results that you provide, keep in mind that future climate analysis will be new to the reader, so providing a comparison with CWEC 2016 results is helpful to provide context. It's also helpful to start by providing a summary of the future weather file, again compared with the 2016 file. This will typically include the heating and cooling degree days, 
the overheating season, and associated monthly overheating temperature limits, as well as a visual temperature profile. Examples of these comparisons have already been provided in the presentation. Of course, you will also need to summarize the resulting peak overheating hours from your project and whether it meets the project overheating hours limit of 200 or 20. Once again, it's recommended to do this for both the future and the current weather files for additional context for the reader. Any optional analyses that were included can also be reported at this time. As we wrap up, it's a good to keep in mind some key points from this presentation. So the potential to overheat in buildings is important to consider during design. As the climate warms, it is becoming even more crucial to analyze and understand. The building energy step code has a methodology for assessing overheating, which begins by establishing an overheating season, then calculates overheating temperature limits for each month in the season, and finally looks at the overheating hours for each passively cooled space within the building. Using this methodology and future climate files from PKIC, future climate analysis is possible to do today. And this allows design teams the option of considering strategies for mitigating future overheating potential. Thanks as always to the MBAR program funders listed here on your screen. As well as other contributors to the program. This concludes our introduction to the Builder Insight number 19, Modeling the Future Climate in Passively Cool Buildings. The document is available at the BC Housing website via the link on your screen. And if you have any questions or feedback, please contact the EMBRA email. Thank you for joining us.